Hello everyone, Portia here, and I'm coming to you guys with the Cosmic Climate for the week of February 8th through February 14th. This is a really nice week. I really love the way I felt when I woke up this morning. Um, there's definitely clarity in the air and a resolution, I feel, um, which kind of makes sense because today, as I'm recording this, February 8th, we are at the halfway point of Mercury retrograde, and that is always indicated by the conjunction that Mercury has with the sun. And so you guys have maybe heard me um, speak about the Kazemi, which is a really um, great time to um, sit in meditation and ask for any um, divine intelligence or any ask any questions um, and making that intention to connect with divine intelligence, um, or even ask for like healing energy, um, from the sun, which can be, um, you know, connected to, you can look at that as source energy. It has that life giving energy. Um, and that's within and without. So you're connecting to that during this time and Kazemi means in the heart of the sun. So therefore we have Mercury in perfect, um, in an exact conjunction, <clears throat> with the sun and so there is that logic and rational mind in um union with the divine mind divine intelligence so that exact um conjunction is that was at 8 47 a.m eastern time um on february 8th and you can really still you know tap into that window i feel today just in general um, and just sit in meditation and just like make an attempt to clear the mind and being like I said that we are in the second half of Mercury retrograde. This is really a time of really bringing everything full circle. This is when you're actually in the point of like reflecting or resolving what was coming up in the first half of retrograde or Mercury retrograde. And so now we're in the point of um, really, like I said, that that theme is is clarity and resolution. And so with all of the other interactions that's happening this week, it definitely is a week of just um, very strong shifts as and more so, you know, with all the Aquarius energy, it's a shift within our minds, how we perceive things and how we um, really think about things. And, and then our reality is created from that. And so moving forward, February 9th, the moon is going to move in into Aquarius. So we are approaching that new moon, which is going to be on uh, February 11th. But with the moon moving into Aquarius, this definitely really gives us an idea of, of just that um, concept of, like I said, our thoughts creating our reality, but then even to build off of that, um, looking at our emotions as a guidance system and really being able to um, understand or sit with the fact that the way we feel can give us an idea of what's coming in the future. So, you know, if you are living your life and you're trying your best to, you know, you're not going to be in uh, in the state of joy and peace all the time. But if you could really appreciate what you have and sitting in gratitude and just being um, also content um, with where you at or owning where you are at this moment, that's going to definitely be helpful um, to the way the future will manifest for you. Um, so obviously we're all human, so we will experience anxiety, worries, things of that nature, fears, limitations, but it's also, it's just all on how you move through that and, you know, how quickly um, you move through it. And the key is to not really hold on to the emotions it's just you know really with that moon and aquarius the theme is objective um being objective to um your emotions and being to you know being able to kind of separate yourself have that balance of rationality but being able to like look and observe and, and see that okay this is coming up because i'm not happy in this situation this particular situation isn't aligned with my core desires or my core beliefs Therefore, I need to adjust. I need to look at what I'm calling in. I need to look at what my desires are and recalibrate, essentially. All right. And so also that day we have Saturn sextiling Chiron, which that sextile is always a supportive energy. So the Saturn, I feel, 
Um, when it comes to Chiron, which is wounds, healing, and even a shamanic journey of understanding our wounds and our relation to that and, you know, how we can help others through that particular experience, I feel like with this supportive energy of Saturn, it's allowing us to really, um, one, connect to esoteric teachings in order to really help us, um, you know, achieve whatever we are seeking to achieve within our, our wounds and just within our own healing journey. And also it's helping us to um, kind of gain some new structure or create some kind of supportive structure. So with Saturn being in Aquarius, it's definitely, um, we're experiencing the healing and new ways of processing information um, and really understanding that thoughts create reality. And moving forward, um, another big theme that is coming through this week is um, creative energy and high vibration. So as we move forward, this is, you know, at the first half of Mercury retrograde, Mercury wasn't really making any connections because usually it's busy connecting, you know, with the planets. And even when it's retrograde, it, it's spending that time connecting. But being that um, Mercury is um in aquarius and we have all these other planets in aquarius it's like mercury's going to make those alignments that are necessary and it's making the squares to the taurus energy um and then it makes its 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 connections to the nodes but um on so on february 10th mercury retrograde will try in the north node which you guys know i look at the north node as a portal into the future into our emotional evolution and, and you know we're dealing with gemini energy we're dealing with mercury retrograde so what kind of information what kind of new perspectives can we gain what can we create from these new perspectives so this really feels like a creative channel that we're allowing ourselves to tap into and with that trying it's harmonious it's creative um and so that's something that you can kind of play with right and this is like i said this this week is there's so much coming full circle there's going to be aha moments present there's going to be um, a lot of optimistic energy so with this creative channel um, that's something that it it will just flow to you if you are open to receiving the information that will really um, help you to excel in the future is going to be coming through this week we also have that same day we have mercury retrograde um, squaring the squaring mars and taurus so this square is really um, especially at this point i feel like you know, the square is, once again, it's that crossroads, it's that wall, it's that point of like, you know, it's a pivot um, point. And so with Mars, the desire to separate, the desire to, yeah, because with that, the Mars is like, it's the opposite of, of, of Venus, where Venus binds, Mars separates. And so um, what's coming through, what I just, looking at the, like the energy of the week, I feel like this Mars, it's more so like whatever information we're receiving through these creative channels, we are going to want to change um, our direction or pivot some somewhere um, or at some point within our desires, like really change something. And so there's going to be a separation and primarily it's going to be hopefully a separation from limiting thoughts and belief systems that you've really had time. It might not be every single limiting belief, but I'm sure at this point, especially during Mercury retrograde, something's been coming up and you're just ready to separate and release that. So that is happening on February 10th. Moving forward, February 11th is a really powerful day. I'm really excited about this day because we have Venus conjunct Jupiter. And traditionally speaking, Venus and Jupiter are the benefic planets. They are very optimistic. Venus is binding and attractive energy. Jupiter is expansion and deeper understanding. And so with those two coming together, it's like, it feels like a gift from the universe. It feels like you're going to be rewarded for your past efforts. And so... Also on the same day, a little bit later in the day, we have the new moon. Um, and so that new moon is going to be in Aquarius. So I feel like this is really a good time to, you know, as we move out of this new moon, um, as the new moon um, progresses or as we move through that, I feel like that this is a good time to really set some intentions for for your within your visions for your future, for your immediate future. Um and so one thing I do want to point out is that we are coming out of in bulk in bulk was last week. And so in bulk is um, a point it's, it's a cross quarter where the veil, like I feel like the veil is, is thinning. Um, and so as we move forward and closer to Beltane, right, which is in May, I'm correct. 
Um, yes. Or actually, May Beltane is in May, but regardless, I feel like the the veils are thin. I'm like getting mixed up on my cross quarter days because I'm like, is Imbolc the opposite of of Salon? Which it is, right? Yes. Yeah, so this is there's a thinning of the veil. That's what I'm trying to get. Um, so I feel like it's easy to access your um, your guides, your higher self. You know, just any kind of energy past. You know, loved ones, ancestors. So. Um, as we're moving forward to the moon, after this new moon, the moon, moon will enter Pisces. So I definitely feel this emotional connection and just feeling the energy, feeling the thinness of the veils. Um, so we're able to penetrate the boundaries and really call in the guidance we need in order to progress and attract what it is we're, we're wanting to attract in. Um, and so um, finishing up this weekend, we have um, some more really good energy. We have Venus conjunct Mercury retrograde. So um, this is, a, as I said in the Mercury retrograde video I offer to my Patreons, this is a point in which I feel that Venus, you know, Venus is the mediator. Venus is the one um, that will kind of like sit and actually listen um, and, and really see what values Mercury has to offer, where it's coming from, what its needs are. When you think about these planets as far as like a consciousness or just their energetic influence. And so Mercury has been connecting with all of these different planets. It's been reflecting and, and you know, doing its thing, slowing down to really think, I guess, about and, and sit with, with, with what's coming up. And now with this meeting with Venus, it's really initiating some kind of like, okay, like this is what I actually want to attract in. These are my values. These are my desires. This is where I'm moving forward and I'm ready to let this go. So Venus is really connecting with Mercury to really increase these vibrations and help us to attract what it is we're calling in. Finally, um, at the end of the week, we have, this is like really a, a significant highlight for Mercury retrograde, but Mercury retrograde is going to conjunct Jupiter. This is the second out of three conjunctions that Mercury will have with Jupiter. Mercury, um, before its retrograde period, so usually sometimes when, um, planets retrograde, there is uh, an aspect that they make three times. They make it before they retrograde. Then when they move back, they have that aspect again. And then when they're direct, they have that aspect, that connection again. So Mercury is doing this with Jupiter. So the first time Mercury, Mercury conjunct Jupiter, that was in, um, that was on January 11th, which that was a very powerful week. There was a lot going on. Um, I remember that week started with January 11th and started with this meeting between Jupiter and, and Mercury. And so if you're someone that journals or you want to just go back and see what came up for you that day, usually with Mercury and Jupiter having a conjunction, there's like some aha moment. There's some information that comes in. There's some affirming news or good news that comes through. And so I feel with this particular meeting between Mercury retrograde and Jupiter, there's going to be aha moments or there's going to be a deeper understanding to whatever was coming up, whatever you've been really trying to get clear on, there is going to be a deeper understanding or some deeper meaning that makes itself present. Um, and then Mercury will conjunct with Jupiter, Jupiter again when it's moving direct um, March 4th. So look for, and I feel like that's really, that's the time where things are really going to come together and an opportunity may present itself um, in regard to whatever it is that you're trying to gain information to or understand something on a deeper level and a deeper perspective. So this this day really feel or this week really feels like optimistic and harmonious. Um, I'm going to see what the cards say. So, you know, the veils are pretty thin right now. So let's see what we get. I just, I've been feeling, oh, look at that. Just looking at the bottom of this string. That feels really, really good. Especially what we need right now to keep going. That's the thing, that's something, a message that's been keep coming up. Keep going. Do not get discouraged, you are so close. Okay, what message is? Don't be shy. Some 
quiet cards today. Oh, this feels right. Okay. Yep. All right. So we got Queen of Cups, which I love in the Rider Weight deck. She's like so focused on this cup, this this chalice here, or chalice. I said chalice. Chalice. Um, it's so interesting. Um, this definitely feels like um paying attention to your emotions, like using it as a guidance system for you know where you are vibrationally. And Queen of Cups is always like feels like creating some kind of sacred space for growth. This is definitely, this definitely correlates to cancer. I'm pretty sure this is the cancer card here. Um, and so it definitely feels like creating, yeah, creating space for something to grow, um, nurturing and protecting that space, um, sustaining it and just giving it what it needs, but not being overbearing, right? Like, don't like sit here and think about, oh my God, when is this going to do this? When is this going to happen? When is this going to manifest? Just like creating the space for it to thrive and grow and like going on about your business and doing something else. Here we have the Ace of Wands, which makes a lot of sense. I feel the universe is handing us this wand to create whatever it is that we want to create. So moving forward, here is creating the space for your desires, your intentions. And then you have here being able to, here's a, here's a new venture. All right. So you have, you set your intentions um, for what you want it, say like at the beginning of the year or maybe even before that. And now it's time to move on and focus on something else. What else are you wanting to create? Because the world is your oyster. This is the time to really understand that you are a natural born creator. We are here to really have fun and play. And so now you've already established your intentions at this moment in time. So what else do you want to do? What else is, is um, how else can you be creative? So on that note, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And I will talk to you very, very soon. Take care.